Hi diddly ho, uh, everyone. Welcome to Super Mega Cast. What is this, episode 12? Yes, you are correct. It is episode 12. Wow, that is that is pretty crazy stuff, man. Episode 12. I didn't I didn't think we'd make it that far. No. I thought we'd stop at 10. And uh yeah, so basically before we get into today's episode, let me just reiterate the fact that finally, after many months of me promising this. Super Mega Cast is finally on iTunes. You can go get it on the podcast app. You can go get it on iTunes on your computer. And it is also on Google Play Music for all you Android users. So now, yeah, let's get a round of applause. Good job. Today. Well, good job to Matt, but well, mainly, not, mainly I, Connor. Yeah, our, our tech guy, Connor. Uh, he He's the guy that really helped us out. He's a little lifesaver. But I, I don't think I deserve a round of applause because... <laughs> You had so long to fucking do this. I could have put it on after, like, the first week of the podcast being out, and it kind of took me, what, like, 12? Well, not even 12 weeks, because it used to be, like, we we would number it because, you know, the podcast would be, like, episode one was one week into the channel, episode two was two weeks, but then when we took the little hiatus, so this is really, like, 16 weeks? Yeah. Yeah, well, fuck. But anyway, (laughs) guys, welcome to Super Mega Cast. We got some, uh, we got some fun topics for you today. Uh, that we have definitely not planned out ahead yeah, of time. We, these are the topics we we had planned for this episode of the podcast. So the first topic we yeah. are going to talk what's, about. What's the topic, Ryan? The topic I have written right down in front yeah. of me that I have planned for this very podcast is we are going to talk about mm-hmm. uh, Pokemon Go and how I think it's honestly just kind of like hitting on a little decline for me. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I'm, dude. I was honestly thinking the exact same thing as we were walking back from dinner tonight, and I didn't bring it up. I, I didn't, didn't. I haven't checked the app all day. I don't believe. I have. I think it's been two days for me. Damn. And and honestly, I think here's the big thing about it. I think one of the big things that turned me off from Pokemon Go. Um, before we get into the actual gameplay factors, I'm yeah. just gonna say it is. You know, it's a it's a cool game for sure, but it's such a rushed game that uh, there's so many bugs that they still haven't fixed. That just, you know, like, if I get a cool Pokemon, like, in our Area 51 video, you have no idea how frustrating it was when a Pikachu appears, and I throw the Pokeball, and then it freezes, and then I reopen the app, and it's gone, and the servers crash. I was like, I, I'm i ready to die now. That was, that was like, the worst moment of my life. It's also just grading because, uh, okay, so let, let, me, let me put it this way. What level are you, Matt? Uh, I'm 15 right now, okay. and I'm having a real hard time yeah. leveling up. <laughs> You're fifth. Use the use those lucky eggs and uh, put been. on a lure at the same time or a um, incense. Incense, yeah. But um, so what was I gonna say about Pokemon Go? It's grading. Oh, oh yeah, this is grading to me. What? So what level are you again? I'm fifteen. Fifteen. I'm I'm level nineteen, and you, your friend, uh, who visited us for a little while. He was level what, like nine? No, 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 no. He was level uh, six or seven at the time. Six or seven. And I, oh, and we're going down the alleyway. Right we we see we see a charmeleon, dude. Yeah, the, I, like I was like, holy shit, a I charmeleon! Know. I've never seen something like that in the and game. I I have twenty four Charmander candies, so this would be like, oh, I could save the candies to yeah. evolve into a Charizard, so you don't have to waste them. Yeah. So, I like I'm all giddy. Matt's all giddy. His I friends all giddy. And uh, we, uh, so we all get in like a little triangle and we find Char- the Charmeleon and we start catching it. We have, I have a bit of trouble, even though I'm using my berries or the candies or whatever they are and uh, throwing my grape balls. Yeah. And I guess you're doing the I'm same doing thing. I'm doing the exact same thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm only using grape balls. And you're feeding me I, those I gave berries. it berries and, he, and he's all, he's charmed, okay? Oh, yeah. And, and you would think, you know, you, you know, we're, we're high enough level trainers. We are using, you know, not the basic Pokeballs, and we, we're, we're using something to charm the Pokemon. It's, it's strategic playing of the game, the type of gameplay that you expected it to want you to do. Exactly. But, but, but what happens, Ryan? Uh, we don't catch it. It runs away on both of our accounts, but Christian, who uses no berries, he uses a regular Pokeball, manages to catch it in his what? It was in the first three tries. First three I think tries. it was the second try. He just snags it, and he's he's like level six in the game. And I was just like, "Are you fucking kidding?" And that's happened to me a lot, honestly. Like I've been around people, and that type of stuff happens where I'm a higher level, and I use those tactics, and it seems like it's not helping it's at like, all. I, I, and like the people that are just starting out, it's allow. It's almost like the game's allowing them to catch Pokemon to get them hooked. And then it's wasting our Pokeballs when we get a, a certain level, so we have to use real money to buy them. That's a now, little course, interesting conspiracy. I, I didn't think of it that way. Th- that conspiracy is probably not correct. I don't I don't feel like 
I don't know, they're that malicious, but I do feel like something's got to something's got to give, Matt. Uh, just <laughs> Great you and I are. I mean, come on, that's str- like strategic gameplay. The most strategic gameplay you could at least do in this type of game. Yeah, lay out a berry, throw out a great ball, because or, or, or a ultra whatever master ball, whatever you're level twenty, blah blah blah. I know there's higher level. There's a higher level pokeball. But what I'm saying is, we actually use some sort of strategy to try to charm it and then catch it, while a level seven just whoop. Yeah, and and I've found myself previously in the game, like um, like you'll be catching stuff, and I'll just use a regular Pokeball and get in on my first try. Like even if it's a really high level Pokemon, I can just throw a regular Pokeball and then whoop, and it gets it. And I'm like, okay. So it it seems like it seems like it doesn't like they're the exact same thing because I have not seen a single instance. And I've played, I've been playing the game a lot, and I haven't seen a single instance where it seems like the Great Ball catches a Pokemon better than a regular Pokeball, or the berries have actually worked, because things still run when I give them berries, so what's the point? It's like, yeah, I get it, it's like, oh, it lessens the chances of it of it, run, of it running away, but it's still, I don't know, it just seems like it, it, it's just all kind of random, and then the items are kind of a gimmick, I don't know. And we're getting just to the point where we're not really catching any new Pokemon. The reason why it's like, it's shit when something like that runs away is like, you know, that's that's the newest Pokemon. And we're, we're not going to see that again. Yeah, we're not going to see that again probably for a long time. I don't months, know. Maybe yeah. weeks, months, I don't know. And it's like, you know, we're at the point where we've got all of the Pokemon in our area. We really have, honestly. Uh, we, almost, we, we're almost, almost up to like 80 in our Pokedexes. <laughs> so it's like... And I know people have a lot of other Pokemon, but what I'm saying is like, we're getting to the point where like, when we play, we rarely see... Anything, anything new. new because the not area... even new shadows. And yeah, we dri- and I drive around a lot. I drive around. I drive around to a lot of places around Los Angeles, including like you know Santa Monica area. Yeah, so it's like you know, um, we're kind of reaching this point where we're. I, I think we're starting to really catch most of the. Uh, we we've caught most of the common to like mid rare Pokemon that are in the Los Angeles area. So it's like you know, every time I open the app, what it does is. First of all, it has a 50% chance of just crashing on me every time I open it. Yeah. And then the other 50% of the time, it takes forever to load, and then it drains the hell out of my phone really fast and uses my data. So it's like, you know, if I'm not catching anything new, why am I going to keep playing if it's just going to crash and drain my battery? Yeah, but that's our that's our, that's our our little rant about Pokemon Go. Um, mainly, like, the biggest thing that pisses me off about it is that it was just a rushed game, and, and there's so many bugs with it that, you know... You want to see- get into rants about gaming? Huh? Oh, I don't, I don't know, man. But wait, 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 wait. Let okay. me tell you something that's gonna okay. piss you off real quick. I was gonna, I was gonna mention. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Just, just one last thing about Pokemon not, Go. Oh no. Yeah. You know the Pokemon Go Plus? What? The little uh, wrist thing. Yeah. They delayed it until September. Come on. Like, how hard is it to make? It was already like I've seen like like why why is it being delayed until September? It's almost unnecessary. For, uh, it's just a little like piece of wearable technology. Like I feel like it's been done for months. I don't think it's gonna be like of too high quality either. No, of course not. It's just gonna be a little plastic uh, gizmo that you wear, and then it'll blink and vibrate when there, there's a Pokemon nearby. But anyway, guys, that's that's uh, just our rant about Pokemon Go. Well, speaking of video game rants, Ooh. what have we been playing quite a bit? Oh, we have been in the past week or so. Ryan and I have gotten ourselves hooked on a little, a uh, little Mario Kart. Mario Kart Eight for the Mario Wii. Kart yeah, eight. yeah, to be exact. Um, it. I don't know. I just. You were like, hey, let's just play some Mario Kart. So we we just finally sat down yeah, and I did fr- it because yeah. you've been you've been asking for a few months, probably. Yeah, I don't know. I just like I was in our living room when I was, I looked at our like game our small game collection. I was like, wait a second, I forgot we have Mario Kart, and we had we had a. Uh, we had our buddy uh, come and visit, our buddy Christian, and we're like, hey, we have three people, let's play some Mario Kart. And then we quickly fell into that hole of, uh, you know, like when you pick up a game every few months and you just get sucked into it. Yeah. That, but 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 you said you were going to go on a rant. What's this rant about Mario Kart? I'm just, I don't know. Okay, one of the things, we played with Chris, right? We did play we, with Chris. Uh, Oni. Uh, Oni. Um, and he hates the game. He says oh, he, the steering is off. He awful. bitches about it so much. He bitches. I don't understand. He's such the a little bitch boy. The steering feels fine. You just have to get used to it. He's like, it's he's not like, even like you have to get used to it because it's bad. It's just you have to learn how to drift and shit. Like, I've never, I've never played a driving game where the steering is this shit. It's like Chris, what are you talking about, dude? It's Mario Kart. Like no one complains <laughs> about that. But it, it, it's funny because like he would consistently get like 
10th, 11th place in Mario Kart and then just sit there and complain the whole time. I love Chris, but he was, he was, he was, he it was pretty It took me funny. a while to get used to the controls of Mario Kart, like the drifting. Like, it took a while to, like, be familiar 150cc on he, every map. Like, well, he was comparing it to, like, Need Need for Speed and GTA and stuff, and it's like, well, you can't compare Mario Kart to those driving GTA's games. Four, GTA 4's uh, driving was, like, panned as really bad. I remember because everything felt like you were driving a boat. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, 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 he's like, he's like, in other driving games, when I hit the, uh, you know, when I turn, it turns instantly. Well, Mario Kart, you know, of course, it doesn't do that because it doesn't do that in real life. But There's also, stats it's like, to each car. It's the art of drifting. Each player, you got to learn the art of drifting in Mario Kart. The art of drifting and setting up a nice vehicle and player combination. Yeah, I mean, you got to get the wheels and the cart right, and the player, like whether it's a small, medium, large player or. They have the different carts, they have the, you know, the motorcycles and the cars, and they have so many different types of wheels, and also the gliding, some of the gliders change stuff in the stats, and it's like, you know, I usually go for uh, the Yoshi bike, the small red wheels, and the Zelda, like, um, kite kite thing. The Helian kite. Yeah, and uh, I always, I'm either Lemmy or Link. I, I just got I just got into Link actually. Yeah, because uh, we we just bought the new DLC for Mario Kart Eight, and it is fantastic. It, well, it's not really new DLC; it's old. But uh, I I usually my my go to character has always been Yoshi. But ever since I bought the DLC, it's Isabel from Animal Crossing because I love Animal Crossing, and I like Isabel's character design and colors. But you know, I just could never get into Animal Crossing. Dude. I don't know why, dude. I mean, probably because it wasn't like I I, ne- I didn't get into it when I was young. Is it like a big thing of it? Is it nostalgia factor? Yeah, like- I mean that's a big factor for me at least. But but I don't know, dude. Just by itself, if I if I picked up Animal Crossing nowadays and I had never played it before, um, I, I mean it might take a little bit for me to get into because it's a little different. But it's I don't know, dude. It's therapeutic. It's very relaxing. It's very uh. What was that other game that was similar to like Harvest there, Moon? It was Harvest Moon, but Harvest Moon's clone. Because you were playing that for a little oh, bit. Oh, Stardew Valley? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stardew Valley was a really fun game. It kind of just disappeared out of nowhere, though. It was like it blew up and it was really popular. And then just. When I talked to people that play the game, they always were like, yeah, it was just very relaxing. It's just like. Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley? Stardew Valley. Oh, it, it's super relaxing. I know Animal Crossing's relaxing because I played on an airplane. Yeah, well. Uh, on my DS. Um, that's the only time I played it. I just played it for like. Uh, like five hours straight on my DS. Yeah, it, it, it well, Animal Crossing is one of those games. It's the type of game that you would pick it up for like fifteen minutes a day. You just play it a little bit every day, check in, do some stuff, and then put it down, and then come back to it the next day. But speaking of Stardew Valley, we actually that was one of our first playthroughs on our channel that we actually ended up scrapping yep. because of uh, that was back in the time we were first getting into recording games, and um, little uh, little Matt here wasn't wasn't <laughs> very good at uh, messing with recording settings and kind of goofed up like three episodes in a row so i remember some of the original jokes from that episode and that's like wait that's like months back it was uh, it, it was actually pretty funny we had a lot of religious jokes because yeah well, our character was jesus jesus h christ yeah. was our character and we made him look like jesus and uh and what was that what was a jew farm or something <laughs> yeah yeah we, I, he was the king of the jews he was the king of the jews no doubt but um i, I wouldn't mind way in the future I don't know. It's like it's there's that weird timing where it's like if we played Stardew Valley right now, it would just seem like we're playing it late. It's like this weird unspoken like timing rule where it's like you got to wait until it's like completely gone and Almost then it's like you're yeah, yeah. I mean it's like you're bringing it back instead of just riding on it late. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I I wouldn't be opposed to in the future doing a Stardew Valley uh playthrough. It's well, a really that's why fun game. A lot of like advanced games and GameCube games and PlayStation, PlayStation 2, you know, all the old console games, that's why they work so well is because they're so old. That's not like a popular thing. Yeah. To like, I mean, it is kind of a popular thing to play them, I guess, in the Let's Play community in a way, because even uh, Jack started playing some. Yeah. He played, started playing uh, Spyro, I believe. It's a big nostalgia thing, too, because people have, uh, a lot of people have forgotten about those games. So it's like, uh, then when they see someone else playing them, they're like, oh, I remember that game. So then they might go back and, and, you know, and watch it. And it's also just this. There are so many video games out there. I like, want to go back to, though. I want to, like, I, there's so many games I want to go back to. And me I want to use this channel as, like, a portal, like, to make me go back to those games. Because if oh, I'm just, yeah, absolutely. If I, like, I'm just normal, everyday Ryan. I'm just like, oh, I could buy those games. Then I'd have to buy the setup for it. I'd have to probably search for the game or whatever. But it's like, if this is the job that I have tasked myself to do, then why not just. Fucking make that the excuse and just yeah, go out of my and, way. And enjoy like, it and get the games you want to get. I want to play, like, Destroy All Humans. Yes. I love that game, dude. I want to play Jaws Unleashed. I got I, I to gotta play, uh, oh, what's, uh, I need to play, um, oh, what's that N64 game? Snowboard Kids. 
That's a bit sorry. A snowboard. That, that's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Snowboard kids. It's such like a throwback to me and we'll my play cousin all that Connor. Stuff. We played we played snowboard kids so much. It was so much fucking fun, man. Do you have games like that? Like you just you go back and it just you 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 feel it like you were oh, in that yeah. time and you're like oh my god it just feels good. You're like just well, sitting in just good times. Yeah, well that's actually how the original Animal Crossing for GameCube is, which. I've seen a lot of people in the comments say they want us to play that, so maybe down the road we'll do like a, a slow burning playthrough of us building a little village in Animal Crossing. Well, for when you play Q. Animal Crossing, what do you what do you experience? What's your what is, what does it take you back to? It takes me back to this weird um, phase when when I was growing up. Um, I don't know. It was this weird, really nostalgic comfort that I can't really put into words. It's not like anything else, but it, but it's this strange nostalgia that when I hear the music. When I see the characters, when I, you know, when I start playing the game, I, I feel this, like, this very just pure happiness, I guess. Yeah. Because, well, it's a good game in my opinion, but mainly I feel that because of, because of the emotions that it brought me, you know, back in the day when I first played it. And then, um, you know, I, kinda, I feel that stuff again. It's the same way with um, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for Game Boy Color. That is, that is a game that, you know, when I play it, it, it it almost makes me want to cry, and that sounds really stupid, but it's like there are certain games in my life that when I play them, I, I it makes it makes me feel like I want to cry. Not like because I'm sad, but because it it strikes this weird like nostalgia chord. That's like the type of nostalgia that just makes you like wish you could go it's back like, there, and you feel it again when you play those games. I feel like it's almost like a sad thing because it's like I I know for a fact I enjoyed games more when I was a kid, and I still love them. I love them right now, but I know like I had this other kind of amusement and uh, adoration for them when I was younger and I think because it's like it's all I did it's it's like I would come home from school and I would play video games right I played split screen video games with my friends and when you're younger you don't have all this shit that you've been through or shit that you know that you're gonna have to go through because you're not so fucking cynical and I just miss like back in the day I just used to sit on my floor and like play war of the monsters on my playstation oh. 2 and just like be in like look at the character screen and be like, oh, that character looks cool. I want to unlock him and looking and trying to look, looking up guides on like how do I get this character? Oh yeah, and shit like that. And, like, and like um, when you used to want to work to get through the game instead of like, I don't know. I played deals. a lot of games. <laughs> I played a lot of games recently, single player. That just like it's a it's a slodge to get through. It's just cutscene after cutscene after like setup after setup, and it's just kind of boring after a while. And I don't know. When I was younger, games were also harder because I guess like I didn't think as I do now as an adult, like I can think more strategically, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, well, that's also like why why kids play games for so many hours because they get they get stuck on something they, you know, they they really want to work through it. Very they, stubborn. I know, but but I I think the biggest thing, the biggest nostalgia thing about games for me is the music. Like when when I hear the music from games that I used to love, it just takes me back, and it like oh, it's crazy the way it feels. I love. I love listening to music from games that I used to love. Um, and, like, it's great when, you know, when you really love um, music from a game. And that's one of the reasons I love Animal Crossing. Yeah. Because the music in Animal Crossing is fantastic. It, it, like, it is it is amazing. Same with Katamari Damacy. Katamari Damacy. Um, You've been playing the clicker game of that. Uh, not so much anymore. I kind of oh, got really? bored of it. But okay. uh, it, it's a cool little game you should check out. However, the music in Katamari Damacy, fucking fantastic. But, like... I don't know. There's just something about video game music that is so like charming to me. Well, that's why I love playing through Donkey Kong Country again. I love this. Oh, I love the, the soundtrack. So I love all the sound effects and everything. I just love the art style. Like, I I played uh, Donkey Kong Country too, and I and I and I kind of ranted about you over my vacation of why I was like, oh, this is I don't like things that they changed from the first one. Yeah, and I just have to go back to the first one. And it's maybe if I played the second one when I was younger, I'd defend it more. But because the cause first it, one is just so just like it's perfect to me. But like, the second one is is different from what you remembered. So I, yeah, maybe if you did play it when you were younger, it, it would be different. But but the saves are still annoying. Like, yeah, collecting the fucking tokens and shit. That's stupid. I don't like it. I actually just bought uh, Donkey Kong Country for the Game Boy Advance because I recently um, ordered an old Game Boy Advance online because I want to try to mess around with it, see if I can like paint it or add Have a backlight. Fun, see if you can beat it. Yeah, but but I I, I got a couple games. I got um, Donkey Kong. I got WarioWare Twisted, which is a fantastic Game Boy Advance game. Any WarioWare game is super fun. And I only then, played the one for the DS. Oh, that's a really good one. The one for Wii is probably my favorite. WarioWare Smooth Moves. We'll it is, play that. We should definitely play it. It's got really fun multiplayer. It's a 
I remember the reason I got that game was because I had this Wii game way back in the day called Elibits, which I was like in love with. Really cool game. Another one of those nostalgic games for me. But my um, next door neighbor, who was a couple years older than me, was like, hey, can I borrow that game? I was like, yeah, sure. You can have it for a few days. And he uh, drove away, and then he got into, like, a terrible car accident with the game in his car. And then later he was like, yeah, I don't. the game is gone after the car accident. And I was like, oh, what, what do you mean it's gone? He's like, it's just gone. And I'm like, okay. okay. So okay. so then he's like, here, I'll give you this really weird game in, in, in exchange. So then he gave me WarioWare, and I was like, and I was like, what is this? So then I played it, and I was like, okay, okay, I can I can deal with this. It's why I dig it. That's a really weird reason why I got that game, but it is a super cool game. All, all, the whole WarioWare series. I, I The mini game, uh, games that I played a lot were I bought the Raving Rabbit games for the Wii. Uh, I had that for Wii, too, like the very first Raving yeah, Rabbids game. I love playing with uh, friends and shit. That was just really fun. I loved the whole Rayman series way back in the... Uh, Way back in the day, like Rayman. There's the one for the N64, I think that I yeah. played. Yeah, I played really fun and creepy. Every everything like polygonal was very creepy to me. Yeah, I, that's why that's why uh, the like you know the 3D Legend of Zelda games were kind of creepy. Like the moon and um, Majora's Mask is terrifying because it, it, I don't know it's just like the the less detail in it kind of makes it creepier than like you know when they when they redesigned uh Majora's Mask for the 3DS yeah i feel like the moon lost a little bit of its creepiness cuz some of the creepiness came from that just kind of like low frame rate um polygonal uh just like creepy face staring yeah. at you did you ever play Majora's Mask i always watched uh, my cousin play it i always i usually just always watched him play games i watched him play Luigi's Mansion and when i talk about like i like, because he always had the Super Nintendo or, like, the GameCube before I did. Or, like, I would get it, but... Smug little bastard. Yeah. Or, like, the thing is, maybe I got him before him. I think I actually got him before him, but, like, he got all the right games. And I was always, like, looking for cool games to buy. And I just never found the right one. And then I watched him play it, and I... It was, like, weird. I guess it's why people enjoy Let's Plays. It was cool just to, like, sit back, relax, and watch him complete it because I knew he was going to yeah. beat it. I, I didn't know what I would be doing in the game. But if he was in the middle of it, I'm like, oh, this is – I want to watch you beat this boss because he described bosses to me. And I just ask him to, like, beat bosses, and I know I probably wouldn't be able to do it because I didn't play the game before. He's like, yeah, I know how to beat this boss, and he'd do it. And I'd be like, whoa, that's so cool because I got to see something that I probably wouldn't have had the time or patience to do myself. Um, and I would just get to see him do it, and I think I really, really fucking enjoyed, like, kind of bonding in that sense, in that way with him. Uh, and then, of course, Split Screen came in when, uh, like, Halo and all that started becoming popular. And it was like, whoa! Yeah. What, what was, I'm trying to think of, like, what my first game was. Do you know what your first game was? My my first video game of all time? Yeah. Oh, I'm, it's definitely Pokemon. It's yeah? definitely Pokemon, Yeah. My first, uh, I'm trying to decide whether it was Pokemon or the arcade system at the YMCA that had uh, Super Mario, the original <laughs> Super Mario Brothers on it. This, there's a place in Santa Monica that has like an original Super Mario Bros. You uh, said that recently. I yeah. did. Yeah, but it, but it, it's it's pretty cool. It's like uh, the picture on the side is actually like hand painted. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, my sister had a Game Boy Color when I was young, and I used to play on that. So I don't know if that counts as like. My first game, but it would be Pokemon Crystal, I think. No, Pokemon Silver, not Crystal. Yeah, Pokemon Silver. And then, um, oh my God, dude. Uh, when I was a really, when I was a little kid, my dad got a, like a computer for the house and he, there was this game called Bugdom. Wow. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, never mind. Now I, now I think I know my first game now that you mentioned the computer. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't thinking about that. It was definitely this game called Bugdom for me, which is this really like, I don't know, it's really cheap 3D game where you played as like a like a roly poly in this massive like bug kingdom and you have to go save the princess or one of those typical game things, but it was really fun. Yeah, one of my first games was the Windows uh pinball game. Oh <laughs> I wanna play that. Is there a site where I can play that? Yeah, let's do a let's play of that of the fucking I Windows. I love the pinball sound game. effects. It's like it's just <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, oh I love it. Oh dude, what about uh did you ever play Math Blaster? Was that this thing that they gave up for school? Uh, I think I think some, but it, it was like, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. No, the one they gave out at school that was Clue Finders. Did you ever okay. play Clue Finders? Yeah, where it was like it had like the little floating like computer thing, and it was I didn't like a team like them. of kids. They weren't fun. I was like, dude, oh, I love cool video games. They weren't fun. I they didn't want to so solve fun. puzzles. I wanted I to just have them. fun and do shit. 
And I and I had what other like of those computer games? I had Reader Rabbit. I had um Reader I remember Reader Rabbit. I fucking there was one Reader Rabbit game that's really nostalgic to me. I didn't mind Reader Rabbit. Reader I, Rabbit was alright. I, I can't find it though. I've searched so far and wide to try to find this game. Um uh, maybe you guys can help me. It was like basically it was like a bunch of different levels or different like rooms, and each one was for a different letter of the alphabet. And it had different things of that letter you could click on, but it was so nostalgic to me. And then there was uh, there was some. There would be an apple in A. Yeah, and I remember an G AM. had grapes, and they were like on a tree, and you click it, and he would like eat one, and be like grapes. A picture of your mom, and you gloss over. It's just called anal Ann. <laughs> God damn it, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I just but... meant like she's very anal. I didn't... Why is that an adjective? Like, why, <laughs> why? Why is that like a commonly used adjective? Like, ah, oh, you're so anal. It's like you think like in this day and age when that word is such a commonly used word and that negative connotation that people wouldn't use it at all. Like, it'd be a very like. You know, did anal come first before anal? Yes, ain't like no, like anal is an ass came first <laughs> because it's a part of the body. So anal came first. Okay, yeah. I I feel like I feel like the word anal, the adjective, is supposed to be not pronounced the same as like anus, like that that one. I think it should be like anal or something. But people so just. Anal. But I feel like people anal. just. <laughs> I think it's I think it's pronounced anal. Is it? Because you know. have some sh- like, like you know the phrase is like what what do you have a stick up his ass. Or whatever they say. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe it literally, is it literally the exact same word? Like it means the same thing? Yeah, maybe. No, but I, I hear it in like professional context. You have though. a stick up your ass, you anal fucker. <laughs> That's my new username, anal fucker. <laughs> the anal fucker. That's me, the just, anal fucker. Your, your, I'm high, your high school AOL username just fucking Matt the anal fucker 90, <laughs> what, five? 96 actually. And then right now, the people listening are like, oh, I was born in 96. He's my age. <laughs> oh, the 14-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second, Ryan. Can we uh, can we talk about Chris Chan? No. Oh, God. It makes me cringe. I don't want to think about that shit, dude. It's so good. Can, can we just talk about it a little bit? Can we address it? Oh, man. You can. It just makes me uncomfortable. All right. So I don't... Some of you... Are we going to talk about what... The thing I'll bring, I'll briefly go into it just Why? a little bit. I Nobody re- wants to hear this shit. It's disgusting. Are you sure? It's if you think that people would want to hear you, well, Ryan, talk about because, Chris Chan's well, endeavors. No, 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 wait, 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 don't endeavors. Okay, his gooch endeavors. <laughs> yeah, then, then sure, Ryan. You know, you know that now because you've prefaced it like that. Everyone's <laughs> like, I gotta hear it. I gotta hear it. They can go read about it. Well, they then they're gonna look it up and then they're gonna go see the pictures. Well, you can I'm get, trying to you save them get from Eternal that. Eternal Eclipse or whatever his name to make a fucking like ASMR video about it. What's his a name? Ephemeral Rift. <laughs> yeah, him. Eternal <laughs> Eclipse. Close same enough. Thing. Uh, yeah, but like, so basically, um, there's a guy named Chris Chan. He makes like and his Sonic. Family on vacation to the 20th. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Uh oh. Oh, sorry. Guy named Chris Chan, a um, little bit of a special dude. He makes Sonic stuff, uh, but basically, um, recently, he he uh, he got a piercing in his gooch. For those of you who don't know what a gooch is, for some reason, it's the space between your balls and your asshole. He got a piercing there because he said that it's uh, it's where his clit would be if he were a girl, and and he wants to like uh, feed his lesbian soul because he believes he's a lesbian trapped in a man's body. So you know, long story short, he gets this piercing. And then uh, unpierces it and then re-pierces it or something like that. Well, of course, you know, this thing becomes like a disgusting gash and becomes infected and like heals itself. So it's like this really gross like wound. So what, what does he think? He, he thinks that he's growing a vagina. He thinks that it's his lesbian soul inside of him like growing a vagina. And he thinks because he watched some like like high frequency videos, it like made his body grow a vagina through like subliminal messaging or something. So basically, that's that's where it is now. He's posting pictures of it on Facebook and stuff. And uh, basically, it's gonna get really fucking infected. Why are, you, I, why are you so interested in this shit? It's funny to me, dude. Why is it funny? It's just gross and stupid. <laughs> because this dude is literally like, like, what is wrong with him? Why, like? He, He's just dumb. I know, but he's gonna End die. Of story. He's going to die because it's going to get infected, and he refuses to get medical help. So he's People a dumbass. People die ass. all the time. But he's gonna just die because, because he's he thinks being he has weird a about it. Just because he's being weird about it. 
We're going to give him a round of applause. Send round off. of applause for your vagina, Chris. <laughs> anyway, let's. Uh, that, that's all you guys need to know about Chris Chang. Go look up pictures of his. Uh, of his that's vagina all they need to want. know. That's pretty much everything about yeah. him. That's well, all well, he wants to be known for. His vagina, yeah. which is really just a massive gash in his gooch. Yeah. God. <laughs> that, ew. That sounds like a. That sounds like a band like Gooch Gash. Oh God damn it. Okay. Well, what do you want to talk about? Let's move I don't on. No, just. Sorry, I'm like. I'm visibly, to, visibly yeah, distra- visibly distracted. You're, you're really, you're rubbing your eyes. You're just like, I see I can it in your picture face. It. It's just you wanted to see the picture. I know. Well, I showed at you first. It, well, I did it. I'm like, okay, go ahead and show me. And you showed me. I'm like, ew. Yeah, it's fucking gross. Says it's just a wound that needs to be healed. I don't know. It, it kind of does look like a vagina a little bit. No, a little bit. Chris, Chris, uh, <laughs> Oni, Oni agreed. Like open wounds. Yeah, <laughs> like dog mouths. <laughs> like, have you ever seen the side <laughs> of like a mouths. dog's mouth? Yeah, I, I own a dog, Matt. Have you ever looked at his mouth? And I've really, been like, yeah, I've looked at my dog's mouth. Have you ever thought that that looks like a vagina? I've never, my penis never thought that because I've never been aroused by it. I'm not it, talking so. about being aroused. I'm talking about your, 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 you know, your conscious mind was like, huh, that has a, a striking resemblance to uh, female genitalia. Some dog gums are like blackish too. Why would that remind Some vaginas me? are blackish. Like a dog's Dude, mouth I don't know goes what's... from like pink, like it just like has a little design, like it's like, like a wavy design of. Black dogs have weird fucking lips and gums though. Dogs yeah. don't have lips. I'm sorry. Dogs have weird gums though. Oh yeah, it's like weird. It, like the ridges and stuff. Yeah, it, it psychs me out when I say I don't like it. It's like Ugh, get that away from me. And just if Lego wanted to, he could rip out my throat while I was asleep. Yeah, and and I feel like Banana could honestly. I'm laying in bed. He could sink his 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 teeth into my neck and probably do a little bit of damage. I don't know if he could kill me, but he could do some damage. You know, if Banana were like four times bigger, he'd fucking kill us both. Yeah. He would because he's a fucking cat and he's not domesticated. He's domesticated, just not, you know, it's not deep down in his DNA like it is for Lego. You know, Banana would fucking tear us to shreds and eat us if. But he's so that's sweet. That's like saying that's like putting like a fucking great white shark in a little like shrinking it and putting it in a fish tank and going, "It's domesticated because I can own it and it can't kill me." No, but because it's not big enough to dude, murder me, dude. When he's if not Banana be- was. It doesn't matter. Any cat. If it was big, is gonna murder someone. Yeah, that, unless they're trained, which banana isn't trained. Well, he's so sweet though. When he at it's at nighttime, okay. I'll climb into bed, and then usually like thirty seconds of me climbing bed, he'll climb up on my bed. And last night, he laid on his back. He like I was basically spooning him, and he's laying on his back with all his paws out in the air, and he was just laying on his back purring, and he was so sweet. And it's like, how could he ever kill anything? But then I know, I, if he were the size of a tiger, he would destroy me. He'd kill, like, there's this video that I sent you of this, like, woman being dragged off In China by a by tiger. A tiger. I, yeah, I was just, uh, minding my business in my room, it was like 1am, and I get a text from Ryan, it's a YouTube link, and I click it, and it's just a woman being killed by a tiger. I'm like, alright. I just thought it was interesting. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm morbidly it's, intrigued by shit like that, because I think everyone is it dragged her off so quickly. And yeah, that, it's, it's, a it's strong, powerful. Th- yeah, it's such a powerful, strong animal, and I... Like we think humans are the top of a food chain, but exit your car and your toast. Yeah, it's um, we're we're not the top of the food chain. We just have established a dominance over every other fucking species. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> because of modern day technology, we're the top of the food chain. But you know, if if we were out in the wild, we'd be we'd be dead pretty quick. I, I don't know. I think everyone has a morbid curiosity to an extent. Some people, I feel like guys have it more than others. So I don't know. Susie has a pretty morbid curiosity. Yeah. You know, I, I, you, you know, I feel like everyone does. Everyone. I really feel like everyone has that. T- I mean, that's why there's traffic sometimes when there's a car accident and people just People look slow down and they want to look at it. Yeah. They, they want to see if there's gore or anything. And yeah. it's like. And they may not be like, I want to see if they're okay or I just wanted to see what's going on. I want to see exactly. No, I mean. You're like, drawn you're, to like, the. If, it, if it's a bigger crash, you're you're more like, it sounds weird. But if it's a bigger crash, it feels like it's like, oh, wow. Like I waited for this type of thing. Yeah, no. If it's a small, if it's like a fender bender, you're like, oh, people are pulling over and slowing down for this exactly, shit. Exactly, you know? It's like, but like if someone dies and it's like, oh no, like that changes the story. Because, you know, people want to see what they don't want to see in a way. It's that weird, like, it's that, it's that strange attraction to death because it's so unknown and so like disturbing and stuff. That's fucking scary, dude. Yeah, it, it's, it's terrifying, but you Sucked. can't. I, I, I'm awake at night sometimes just thinking about it and I'm scared. You can't be afraid of it, though. I, I mean, easier said than done, but. It's like, uh, of I could, course, we could walk out to the parking lot tonight and someone just pop in the back of my head. I wouldn't know. No, you wouldn't. I, I wouldn't mean, know. I probably would. I'd be like, oh shit, Ryan <laughs> just got shot and then I get shot too. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's like we could fucking, ah, oh, I just shit myself. Sorry. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, Ryan just shit himself a little bit. But sorry. But back back to back to the the death talk. You know, it's like, I mean, I'd lie if I said I wasn't afraid of death. But uh, I mean, everyone's afraid of death to an extent. I don't let it control. You know, it's, it doesn't control my actions. I I, I know someone. But that, I do have regular safety. Like I'm not gonna. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. No, no one's gonna be like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not scared of death at all. I'm gonna. I'm gonna eat this cyanide pill. Cause, you know, I don't. I don't give a shit about death. I'm gonna stand on top of this moving car. I'm going to I'm going to jump in front of this train just see what it feels like but it's like I don't know it's that it's like everyone has a weird curiosity that's why subreddits exist like uh watch people die in morbid I, reality Yeah morbid reality I I definitely have been watching a lot of watch people die. Like, man people It sounds gonna, weird saying people that People are going to go to these subreddits Okay like, if you don't want to watch people die yeah, don't go to like, a subreddit disclaimer. called watch people die It's fucked up Yeah like, and that's advertising it more like if I was young and listening to this I'd want to see it No when I was young I like it's weird because you know when we were young, the more like sexually disgusting stuff was popular, like two girls, one cup, and uh, well, two guys in a sandbox. Oh yeah, two kids in a sandbox. That's whatever. That's good shit. It's but disgusting. It's weird. You know, when I was in middle school, you know, like you, you, when when you start to see more of like how the world really is. Um, I don't know. It, it was weird because like at a young age, of course, I have the internet all to myself. So you, you know, you get curious and you look things up. And like, of course, at a young age, when I'm in like. When I'm like 13, of course, like one of the things I looked up was, you know, I feel like a lot of kids do this. They look up, you know, gore, that kind of thing, yeah. because because you're you're curious about it. And I remember it like fucked me up after I saw some. But like, I don't know. It's it's that weird. Like, huh, that's it's interesting. Well, today not I'll, like it, like an attractive way. Yeah, of course, not like in a sexual way. But yeah. it's like it's like a weird like. It's like this shit happens. It's 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 kind of like the, it's a difference between it's reality. Well, yeah, exactly. As it was, it's the difference between hearing forty dead in mass uh, shooting uh, just this week, hearing it on the news, and then hearing it on the news, and you're like, oh my god, that's terrible. But like, I don't know. When I go and search this stuff, and I see the world for what it is, and like all the violence and shit that happens, it just Makes me it's just like it's just like okay, I actually understand what's going on now. I actually understand how fucking brutal it is, and like it's not like this kind of like I'm not like oh no, oh, another shoot, oh no, violence. Whenever it happens in the media, of course I'm affected and I think it's terrible, but I'm not surprised by anything that happens anymore. I'm not in the least. I've seen I've seen too much and I've heard too much. It's just there's been a massive uh, spike in the number of. Uh... You know, like mass murders recently, like well, in 2016. Yeah, well, like even history history proves us right. Even in our lifetime, with uh, 9/11, bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Hello, uh, George W. Bush. Haha, -ha, jokes. Uh, but that's a big fucking event that happened in our lifetime. Yeah, and that, like, and I feel like since that happened in my lifetime, I don't. It's gonna be hard for something else to trump it, except for the beginning of a uh, Trump. Trump. Yeah, I, I was just about to make that joke. I, I was just, I was just saying that because of wordplay. But for some reason, I thought when I is it weird that when I thought of Trump's name, World War Three also entered my head. No, because of the fucking shit he says. <laughs> it's not weird at all. Someone like no one, no one's gonna be offended. Like, oh, you, oh. dude, Donald Trump's a goofy fucking man, dude. He's a, such a stupid. Cunt, He's dude. such a goofy dude. Like, I hope he becomes president just oh so I can God. say on this podcast, like, if he's our future president, he's a cunt, dude. <laughs> dude, I just, he's so fucking goofy. He's I, an idiot. <laughs> it just, I can't get over it. I, I, I I'm so, no. I'm so interested by him. I'm so interested by this whole campaign. And that's why he's in the fucking lead in the polls, because everyone's like, he gets so much media time, and, he, and he's like a train wreck, and people, dude, Bringing it full circle back to the fucking like people are intrigued by like morbid shit. People like watching train wrecks. People like watching bad shit happen. Well, it's people like watching TV. Donald Trump. Yeah, there, there's a thing on YouTube. I think it's a video that explains it. He's like doing what reality TV does, and he's people like going. Tune he's in. going in the same kind of like waveform that big reaction, small reaction, all that type of shit. Yeah, when and it comes to the and, shows. and you know the media is like, oh, this is this is perfect. You know how many views and everything we're gonna get if we. You know, we we headline what Donald Trump said. He said this ridiculous thing about Mexicans. Let's headline it. A million views. Everyone's going to be watching our news network. And they keep doing that, and it feeds into this massive just cycle. And then next thing you know, he's leading in the polls because there's a lot of stupid people out there. And then yeah. all that exposure of Donald Trump gets to all those stupid people. Just, and then next just, thing you know, we got uh, Donald Trump leading our country. That It can't happen, Ryan. It it can't. It's going to happen. Well, it, it's likely. It's possible. And I, I honestly, like, I don't know. I've, I've read up on a lot on both candidates, and I don't want to give, like, I'm not going to say which one I'd rather have. I'm just going to say either side I look at is, is not enjoyable. <laughs> it's, it's not enjoyable. It's not, a, it's not a good experience. I don't, I don't 
I don't know. I'm not proud. Everyone's like, I'm not proud of the way things have turned out. Um, you gotta pick one. It's like, no, I don't. I just fucking hate them both, so I don't have to pick either one. <laughs> it's yeah. like, just, I'm not, you know, my my voice on politics and my opinions on politics and even my vote, it's not, I'm, I'm not dis- discouraging anyone from voting. I think everyone should vote. I'm just saying that me, it's not going to make a difference. So I'm not, people are like, oh, well, you're not voting. You're part of the problem. It's like, I'm just not going to get involved because, you know, it's not worth my time. It's it's a whole publicity stunt. It's it's all stupid shit, and it's like I'm, I'm not, not gonna the, make. A I'm difference. not in the place to help either. Yeah, exactly. Side, so honestly. it's like, like it's not like I'm. I well, you can choose the 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 I don't know the worst, the best of the, the lesser worst. of two evils. Yeah, as um, they say. And it's just, and I'm not even gonna say. I don't know. I I. There are other candidates, of course, in this term that I mean, this has been a very entertaining, eventful. Oh, this has been the most entertaining election I've ever been alive to witness. It provided so much entertainment. I hope we're all like this. Until it became so fucking real and scary. Like, we were all laughing, and now it's just kind of like, it's almost like I'm testing you in the car. Like, I'm like, oh, am I going to break, Matt? Am I going to break? And And now it's it's going to way, we're way too close to the edge of a cliff now for you to feel comfortable. And I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, well... Ryan, you probably should have break by now. <laughs> yeah, and I exactly. say that as we're fucking in midair, all going <laughs> off the cliff. Like he, you should have break by now. Yeah, it was exciting at first. Like, oh, is it gonna break? Oh, of course it's gonna. Oh, fuck. I, I, part of me feels like I wonder if this is just what politics always was, and now that we're and now we're just old enough to, enough to see it. Yeah, that, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just a busy contest. It, it is, but I, I think that this election will go down in history because I, I think that this election. Either way, you're getting a big goof, a big goofy you're fuck getting, as a president I, or the first woman president. It's gonna make history either way. Sa- South big Park, big goofy Donald Trump. Well, this is what this is what we can be sure of. No matter which one of those candidates becomes president, it's gonna suck. But then, you know, they're never gonna get elected for a second term. Either neither one of them will get elected for a second term. People are gonna be listening to this in like four years and be like, "They're yeah, he's getting elected for a second term." I know. No, but like uh, he's gonna except he's Trump's gonna be celebrating at the DNC next year. <laughs> he's gonna take over the fucking <laughs> left. Yeah, but uh, basically, um, it's like like no matter which one we pick, it's gonna suck for four years. But then after that, it's gonna be this amazing probably like growth where it's like, oh, they're gone, and now we have a new candidate, and America is just on the upward rise now that's when that's when a, a like a hitler type comes a dictator into place. can come in yeah that's where he's gonna like oh anyone besides those two and then we're just gonna get fucking hitler who's been uh who uh faked his death and has been hiding out in south america he's still alive actually yeah so if you're out there hitler uh we he's, uh, he's, i think he's he's actually probably a big fan he commented on one of our videos no joke yeah uh, well there was a user named hitler so uh i mean if he's a big fan, if you're a fan of Super Mega Cast, thank Adolf, you, sir. Stop it, Adolf. Adolf. You know this is getting you in the trouble. Ooh, Adolf, they're they're tapping into Adolf. your fucking. He's coming, dude. Send us a message though, for real. DM <laughs> us. But um, we have some ideas. However, uh, <laughs> did you see the Eric Andre at the Republican National Convention video? Such a such a clusterfuck of uh, of entertainment. I love Eric Andre. He's like <laughs> that's my that's the comedian. perfect way to kind of describe his comedy. Uh, just a clusterfuck of entertainment. Yeah, he just goes to the Republican National Convention and he just basically trolls people. He he just like he he'll he'll get a whole bunch of things in his arms and then just like walk and just trip. Or he'll just like <laughs> go pee outside the building. And um there's this guy named Alex Jones who runs InfoWars, which is a really <laughs> crazy InfoWars. It's, it's a crazy fucking website, but but Eric Andre like went to the InfoWars rally and he like was in the audience holding up a like a microphone on like a 10 foot pole like I want an interview with Alex <laughs> yeah. and like there's like guys with don't tread on me flags like fighting his like microphone <laughs> with it and then Alex Jones sees him and he's like bring the guy from the Daily Show up here bring him up because he thinks he, Daily he, he thinks he's Trevor Noah and 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 he so he brings Eric Andre on stage and he's like does he, he really think he's yeah. Trevor Noah and he starts talking to him about the Daily Show and he's like I'm not on the Daily Show but uh, I want you to have sex with my wife I'm and, serious. Here's my hotel key. I want you to fuck my wife. Yeah, on stage, and like all these Trump supporters are like booing, and they're wearing shirts that say like Trump's militia and stuff. Because <laughs> those people fucking exist, dude. <laughs> and it makes me sad. Like you are entitled to whatever opinion you have, but some opinions are just fucked up. Just weird. Yeah. I don't know. Some sometimes I think I'm the crazy one, because it seems like the majority are, are voting. Trump. They, the majority. That's how, the Trump is is the head. 
Hillary's the head. Like this is this is what it is. This is you what know, it is. To a lot this of people, we are the crazy is... ones. What? To a lot of people, we are the crazy ones. We're the yeah. wrong ones. And you know, to us, they're the wrong ones. But to to them, we're the wrong ones. But doesn't that make us? If if more people, if this is a true democracy, then aren't we well, the wrong ones in this argument? But Ryan, we don't need to open this can of worms. But America's not a true democracy. <laughs> it's no, it's not a true democracy. <laughs> But I, I don't think either uh, one of them actually got where they college, are from votes. Man, I, I, that's college conversation. Yeah, dude. that's just cringy college have, conversation. You have that one out in the uh, out in the quad. <laughs> yeah, you debate some. You debate some. Uh, over some in, Christians out in the quad. Over in the over in the shoe, <laughs> the horseshoe <laughs> yeah. at USC. Ah, uh, God, I miss USC campus. a lot. I, only, I went there for you. You went there for you. I did, and and so did you. I I loved USC. We're talking about <laughs> University of I South Carolina. I went there Carolina. for a year. You went for the you. The, uh. I said something, then you repeated it back to me. I know, I because I couldn't think of what to say. That I was like, I did, yeah, I Anyways, did go to college. What were you for saying? a year? Yeah, but uh, you're saying something stupid, I'm sure. Okay, guys. Well, that is about all the time we got for this episode of Super Mega Cast. Um, yeah, just just to reiterate, Super Mega Cast is now on iTunes and Google Play Music. And what we're gonna do is we're putting the podcast on YouTube every Thursday, and then it's going to drop on iTunes every Saturday. Yep, yep, so. Yep. You gotta you gotta listen to it on YouTube if you want it early. Otherwise, just wait until it comes out on iTunes and Google Play on so we're Saturdays. selfish little gremlins that want your money. We want your money, even though it's not your money. It's advertisers. We're money. not stealing anyone's money, but big corporations. So. Unless you're with YouTube Red, then thanks for your hard-earned cash. Help us steal corporations' <laughs> monies by watching our podcast on YouTube. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, fun little podcast, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Buttholes are scary as fuck. What?